Chris, at this point we have uh, uh, eight of the 11 TSC members, so we've reached quorum and uh, are ready to get started. Can you hear me? Yeah, somebody needs to go on mute, though. Um, if you're not speaking, if you can go on mute. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Thanks, Mike. Um, so, good morning, everybody. Um, I think the, the background noise uh, I was trying to say is before. Um, we have a number of items on the agenda this morning. Um, Intel is bringing forward uh, and would like to discuss, I think, a proposed contribution. Is that correct? Is Patrick on? Yes, well, I am. Are you present? Oh, okay. No, Patrick right. is on. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Um, and then uh, that'll be followed by, uh, we have two uh, documents that we've been um, uh, noodling on for the past uh, few weeks. And I think it's important that we sort of settle on these. This is the, the project life cycle and the project proposal template. Uh, and so Arno and, and Vipin, Vipin, are you on? Yep, okay. Um, uh, we'll we'll cover those and and hopefully we can finalize those and and uh, agree to them and 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 make them formal things. I mean, again, we can always change them after the fact, you know, um, and and you know bring up proposed changes to those. But um, I think it's important that we just sort of establish, you know, the the, uh, the initial set of ground rules. Um, uh, and then we have uh, our work update. So from requirements, architecture, white paper, and entity. Um, and again, some of those are just getting underway, and that's fine. And you know, you know, maybe that can just be a, a call for participation. Um, uh, then uh, we have two uh, upcoming face to faces. So we have um, a tooling continuous integration face to face that we talked about on the last technical steering um, uh, when many of us were in um, uh, in Tahoe. Um, and 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 see Westmoreland, you know, propose that we sort of get everybody together and we can, you know, sort of, uh, you know, sprint through getting, you know, Garrett installed and configured appropriately and, and so forth and figure out exactly what it is that we need um, from a tooling and, and infrastructure perspective. And then and then that'll be followed by um, discussion of the next technical uh, sort of hackathon, uh, you know, face to face uh, following on the success of the one we had in Brooklyn and um, uh, and and then uh, the other thing that I, I Todd I don't know if you, you caught this but uh, I think we just need to make sure that we we power through the the action items from the previous minutes um, and uh, I was just looking for my previous minutes yeah uh, here see March 25th correct no that's not it. Where's the minutes? Uh, I'll leave everybody I was just I had them Steering. Here we go. Which there for response. Okay. okay, so from an action perspective, we had um apologies, I, I thought I was prepared, but I wasn't. Um, so we had an action. Uh, I was going to send a, a request to the list to um, uh, solicit volunteers to join the continuous integration uh, pipeline team, and I have done that, and we have a number of volunteers, which is great. And I created a Slack channel. Um, uh, there was just a, a couple. I think some people said, "Oh, people from my company can do this." Um, so let, let's just follow that up. Make sure everybody. Um, that intends to, to participate and contribute, um, get onto Slack and join that channel so we can start coordinating. Um, and then, uh, let's 
there was an action for the Linux Foundation added identity mailing lists. Oh, oh, I, I created an identity mailing list for um, for Chris Allen. Um, I, I didn't see that happen. Did it, uh, Philip? We'll, we'll get that shorted out shortly and connect directly with Chris on that. Okay. I think that was the action. I don't see any others. Um, I thought I saw another one before, though. All right, I don't. Okay. Um, oh, I know. There was an action for Chris and Mick to work on the README. Um, um, I'll take the blame for uh, not having that done today. Um, I don't blame. Chris and I have been having, yeah, we've been having the conversation about it. We're meeting on it. So. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure that we're, you know, that we stay on top of these things. That's all. Uh, yes, we're aware of it. Okay. All right. Um, so, um, Patrick. Yes. Um, so, can you hear me okay? And can you see my screen? Anyone? Yes, we can. Yes, and yes. Good. Yes, cool. System works. Okay. So thank you very much. I'd like to tell you about our, uh, our what we're doing today. We are open sourcing our uh, project, which we're calling uh, Distributed Ledger. Just going to give you uh, one slide to cover some of the, the high points, and then I'm going to go visit the uh, GitHub repo and then uh, visit our documentation. Um, should take only a few minutes. All right. Thanks. So, so some of the uh, key points of our distributed ledger. Um, first is that it is highly module modular and extensible. And three examples of that here. Um, the first is that um, we have multiple gossip tech, uh, topologies. We have both random walk and Barabasi Albert. Um, the, the latter one being a um, scale-free network with preferential attachment. Um, second is the consensus. We have something called POET, which I'll talk about uh, in just a minute. Uh, we've also implemented a quorum voting a consensus algorithm. And you can switch those just by changing the name in a configuration file. Uh, same with the gossip topology. The third is the um, solution domains or problem domains or business logic. And for that, we have something called transaction families. Now, what's a transaction family? A transaction family um, provide the, the data model, the transaction semantics, and the validation. What we've done is we've separated the consensus from the business logic. So you can drop in new transaction families uh, to do this. Uh, we include three transaction families. Um, the first one is a very uh, simple distributed key value pair where the values have to be integers. It's called integer key. Um, and just as an example of, of how to do a distributed key value pair, um, the second one is called an endpoint registry, uh, which we use for registering our endpoints. Um, and the third is the most complex, and that's called a marketplace. And that allows you to set up participants, asset types, assets, holdings, offers, exchanges uh, between, between the participants. Um, and so you could extend any of those three transaction family, or you can use them as is, certainly, and we have very successfully. You can extend those or you can create new um, transaction families. Now, uh, the, the uh, consensus algorithm that we're calling POET for proof of elapsed time, and it's a power efficient replacement for proof of work. Um, very simply, each node um, has a, uh, calculates a, a target mean time uh, to delay. It, it picks a random number, um, and then it um, delays that amount of time, and at the end of, of that amount of time, it claims leadership uh, by publishing the block. Um, and the idea is that it would run inside a trusted execution environment, such, such as Intel Software Guard Extensions, or SGX. And that, uh, that environment would provide, provide certificates of attestation in some way, not only that um, the random number was picked um, uh, in a trusted environment, but also that the delay executed in a in the trusted environment. Okay. 
And uh, um, you can get this or see this at github.com slash Intel Ledger with uh, two L's. Okay, so let's go to the um, repository. I'm sorry, the project. So here's the Intel Ledger project. We have um, several repos. I'll go over just uh, I'll go over a few of them. So uh, our internal name for this project was Sawtooth. So you will see Sawtooth uh, here and there. Um, Sawtooth Core is the um, the fundamental um, component. And if you go down to the README, um, you'll see a couple of a couple of things. One of them is a link to our um, documentation. All of the readme's link uh, to our documentation, and then uh, an explanation of what's in the um, what's in the repo. So, Sawtooth Core is the, the core components. <coughs> Sawtooth Validator is the um, is the the validator process. So this includes the startup and the um, all of the configuration settings and, and and all of that wrapped around the Sawtooth um, core components to to build the validator process. And that's in here. And then the third one is, uh, and that validator, by the way, includes the implementation of the integer key and endpoint because they're very simple transaction families. And then the Sawtooth marketplace, is, uh, as I said, is a more complex transaction family. So that's in a separate repo, which is a Sawtooth marketplace. Um, and then the um, Sawtooth Dev Tools um, is the Vagrant environment. You can uh, jump in there. You can start a Vagrant environment, SSH into it, and uh, be up and running uh, tests and our tutorial in a matter of minutes. Ho hopefully, uh, we have tested it many times on many systems, and it, and it works well. And then lastly is the DOM. Which is the source code of our of our documentation. So jumping to our documentation, um, that's on a, a GitHub I/O. It's hosted there. It's generated from our documentation files. Um, we've got an introduction, we've, which explains uh, all what I've said in a little more depth. Um, we've got a tutorial. So this one not only gets you started bringing up Vagrant, but also um, running a marketplace. And in this marketplace, you're actually creating uh, participants, uh, asset types, assets, holdings, uh, doing offers and exchanges, which are all of the entity types um, supported in the marketplace. And then we have an API for the uh, developer's guide, or we have a developer's guide that includes the API documentation and the web API documentation, and then the marketplace developer's guide um, explaining how to use some of the, the marketplace code. Um, anyone from uh, Intel have any any comments on uh, on this first, and then I'd like to get other other questions. Nick, did I uh, did I miss anything? Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. And then um, Chris, it's up to you how much time you want to allow for discussion or or, or questions. I know you have a, a full agenda. I, I think we have time, so I mean, anybody's got any questions? Yes, you know the. Um, I, I have, I have, you know, one one question is so, is 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 the intent then to make, make a formal proposal to incubate this or parts of it, or help me understand where you're, you know. So today we are we are simply announcing that it's out there. We're hoping people will obviously go and, and, and look at it and study it and, and uh, run a tutorial and, and get feedback to us. Um, we would like to come back within a week, uh, maybe two, but ideally a week with um, further proposals of, of what we'd like to do. Okay. Hello, Patrick. This is Tomas from Digital Asset. Um, Hello. I understand you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Um, I understand your proposal of proof of elapsed, elapsed time as an alternative to proof of work, also in the sense that it is, uh, since the block creation is random, there could be also parallel block creations in the network, right? So this means uh, the, the blockchain would have, would have to be, deal with reorgs of the blockchain, right? Yes. 
Okay, that that I think is that's a very very important requirement then uh, to to incorporate such a such an algorithm, which I, I think is re uh, really a, really a very exciting very exciting development. Thank you. Right. So we we have the the equivalent. Uh, I believe it's the equivalent of the the algorithm for the double spend problem in in Bitcoin. Right. So we have to um, back off uh, some some blocks and then go forward. It's it's a similar forking. Yes. Patrick, Richard here from R3. Thanks for this. Um, very exciting. Um, I'll show some ignorance here now because I don't know how widely deployed SGX is. So it may well be that um, I'm not speaking accurately. But uh, on the assumption that, that these chips are, are available, is 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 it possible to to use SGX with the, the code you release or code you plan to release? So in other words, could we uh, or could people um, run something now or, or in the future um, where the the proofs actually are coming from within the secure enclave, so to speak, rather than simulated. Is that is that in the plan? It sounds quite cool. So. Fantastic question. Thank you. Um, so, uh, SDX is uh, is on some processors. It's not on all. So, what we've done is we have created a poet simulator, and that's what's in this release of the software. It simulates the behavior of poet running inside SGX, but it's not running in SGX. Um, for, and for that reason, we have several um, cautions in the code um, and the documentation that this is not a secure implementation and should not be used for a production, a secure production environment, uh, because we're only simulating um, the, the uh, trusted execution environment. Um, we are still working our, uh, our plans for a final implementation that would use a trusted um, environment. And uh, Kelly can say more about that. Thanks. Yeah. So the um, I'll I'll jump in and said the uh, um, the algorithm that's there is the algorithm that would run in the the trusted environment. So the intent is to provide all the uh, performance and and functional characteristics of the the full fledged deployment, but in a way that that makes it easier to experiment with. <clears throat> one of the one of the important aspects of of the design is that. I'm sorry, is there a question? It's feedback. Um, one of the important aspects of the design is it is it brings things it brings consensus back to something like one CPU, one vote, or one um, machine, one vote. And uh, in order to put up test networks, if you want to run a simulated network of of uh, 20 validators on a single machine, it's actually a little bit easier to work with a simulated environment because you're not uh, actually restricted then to running just a single one per per uh, device. Hi, Pat, uh, Pat. Has set up a, a few uh, uh, fact items on this that, that he asked me to, to to get merged in this morning, but I was running a little behind. So we'll be doing uh, updates to the the docs uh, throughout the day, and of course, you know, on, ongoing uh, now that we're we're live out there. So um, there's also a a Slack channel that will be referenced in the, the documentation uh, and uh, would love to get feedback from the community uh, in, in that channel and in, in all the other channels that are available to us through through Hyperledger. Hi, uh, Dan and Patrick. This is Hart here. I was going to ask if there was a white paper on this or something written up like uh, reasonably formably. Uh, no, there is the uh, or, or, or the introduction in the documents is uh, what, what we have uh, today. I don't recall if if Mick has uh, separate documentation. We've been working on this for a while, so there's been different uh, different versions of documentation going on and off for for a while now. But um, I think the what we have written up in the the project documentation out on GitHub is. Uh, at least a, a strong overview, and then of course uh, the code is fairly precise. Great, thank you hey, very uh, much. Hey, hey Dan, Dan, or Patrick, this is uh, this has been from uh, from IBM. Could you could you elaborate a little bit on what happens when the leader um, self-elected and uh, send out a 
uh, a batch of kind reaction how 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 is the validation work in 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 your implementation is there a execution engine or a scripting engine or something like that to execute the kind reaction so the the blocks are made up of just uh, transaction identifiers right which are hashes of the transactions and um, the transactions are also distributed through the gossip network and to or to validate a block it needs to validate uh, each uh, transaction and then it, it will call out to the code in the transaction family right, to validate uh, each transaction which is what makes it extensible to new transaction families and, and a code and the just for the transaction family is part of it's part of the uh, distributed ledger. It is part of. It is running on each node. Yes, yeah, so you can think of the, the validators as a, a composition of the the business logic, which is abstracted from the consensus mechanism, and then the the selections of the um, the the consensus and um, and uh, peer protocols. Right. I'm trying to compare with either. Bitcoin or, or OPC or, or DAH model, whether whether there is an, an interpreter or an execution environment for uh, for um, the I, I call them the the scripts for the transaction uh, or that baked in as part of as part of the, your distributed ledger code. Yeah, I see what you mean. So it's it's more on the side of being baked in. So our security model was more that. Um, the network would be safer if there wasn't arbitrary code execution. And so the, right. the transaction families are concretely defined and then deployed uh, as modules on top of the validator. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is Morali from DDCC. In terms of the business use cases, have have you guys tried this platform in implementing any business use case, like an IoT or other business use cases? Yeah, so that's a that's a great question. Um, maybe uh, I was not sure if that was Kelly or Mick that was going to jump in there. Or neither, possibly. So, hey, sorry, uh, I, I was on. I was on mute there. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there, there's been a couple of different use cases. Uh, we haven't been uh, heavily focused on IoT, um, but we have used the endpoint registry um, as one sort of example of that. Uh, we've also done. Uh, we did participate in the R3 uh, projects. We did some financial service use cases. Uh, and we also have some work that's ongoing uh, with other digital assets such as event ticketing. One of the motivations of the consensus protocol was to facilitate things like IoT where you would have um, you know, considerably more nodes than, than what might be in say an isolated internal distributed ledger at a, at a single facility or something like that. Yeah, and I think uh, Mick can probably uh, talk about this a little bit more, but we have tested the consensus mechanism uh, with up to a thousand uh, different uh, participating validators. That's correct. <clears throat> and I think the highest I pushed it was about 2,000 running on uh, VM, so we weren't using, so we're using an emulated version. Um, and the integer key transaction family that's in there is kind of our testing family. Thank you. Hi, this is uh, Vani Komera from DTCC. Uh, just wondering what kind of uh, language support do you have for smart contract development? So the, the, um, the, the validator and the code is written in Python, so that would be the simplest uh, language to implement the um, transaction family logic in as well. And the options again would be extending some of the existing Python transaction families that we have, or if there's interest in creating a, a new transaction family. Um, <clears throat> 
uh, like Patrick said, the easiest thing to do would be to do that in Python, but but of course there's there's always ways to adapt different languages um, uh, to intermix. Hi, this is uh, Dave Vol. Um, did I hear you say earlier that the transaction families uh, do they um, do they support like a, a Turing complete language or or not? You know, you want to restrict it so it's more deterministic. Um, I guess you could look at it from two different ways. One is you can you can author a transaction family that has whatever kind of uh, whatever kind of orthogonality you want in it. So you could author a transaction family that is, uh, uh, you know, fully Turing complete. Uh, you could, for example, attach something like, like a, an Ethereum style um, uh, execution model as, as a transaction family. The, the example transaction families that we've written though have a restricted verbiage to them. And uh, and privacy is achieved through executing within the uh, SGX secure environment. Is that the plan or the reality? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so privacy, there, there's a number of things that we have working on in, in privacy. What we've got available today uh, that's out there on on, um, on the the web page that that Patrick has up. There are not specific uh, or different private uh, mechanisms in that, but yeah, the the short answer, I guess, is that uh, what we anticipate is being able to do some unique things in in SGX enclaves that afford uh, a certain level of uh, privacy, confidentiality in the transaction models. Okay. Uh, I'm, more, oh, I'm sorry. I was just gonna just just to clarify. So we wouldn't be able to implement something with just this code base yet. Um, it hasn't quite uh, been developed for that yet. Is that what you were saying? Um, no, I was just saying right. that there wasn't like a a, a private facility within this code. The the transactions are uh, are fairly you know open at, at this point. But there's nothing that restricts you from layering uh, any sort of privacy model into that. So you're the not providing. Family. Sorry, I was just going to say that the transaction families provide you a way of defining the set of semantics and what you want to expose at any given point. We are not in this uh, release um, providing some of the. Um, uh, fundamental capabilities for doing peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, private transactions at this point. And all I can say is that is a very interesting question for how to do SGX development for that. Um, there's some work that's being done at Cornell and some other places um, that are already looking at those problems. But, but again, correct me, the transaction families, you could either extend marketplace or write a new transaction family, which could include um, encrypting the transactions. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Patrick, uh, just so much again. Um, you, your model uh, basically stores uh, one word per CPU. So how is, how is you permissioned or identified? Did, did you also develop the concept for that in the code base? Um, so the, yeah, there are actually two parts, two levels to that. Um, one is, uh, and, and the current transaction families don't use this for, for the validation process, but we've made the facility available should it be uh, necessary. Um, but all of the validators register themselves uh, there's a particular transaction family endpoint registry, which is used to identify all of the participating validators, connection information, uh, identities for them. Um, that can be used as a point of restriction for uh, identity access to it. Um, 
uh, again, one of our areas of development is how to uh, make the identity processing more robust. Um, and then the second thing is <clears throat> um, uh, SGX signing allows us to at least identify the fact that two um, of what we call weight certificates originated from the same location. So we have at least an ability to uh, identify and articulate and enumerate participants in the validation process that way. In, in, in a sense, to avoid any kind of a civil attack on the network, uh, the least there is a there is a, a an authority um, on your side, um, basically um, certifying the uniqueness of the chip. Or how should I explain? Yeah, this um, yeah, Tomas, there's, there's a uh, there's a hardware based key uh, that's on every Intel platform. Um, Either that key could be used as a sort of uh, uniqueness uh, or a unique identifier for the, the PC. The other option is that you could actually provision, uh, for instance, in a private deployment, you could provision a unique key to each device uh, into the SGX enclave that, that would be unextractable by the user of the system. And then that could be used to identify uh, and prevent civil attacks. So there's both a sort of a solution, uh, an already embedded unique key for permissionless settings uh, that can be leveraged, uh, or in a private setting, you can actually provision a specific key uh, to allow validation to happen on that platform. Correct. Thank you. That sounds great. Okay. Um, I, I think we should um, wrap up. I, as Dan mentioned, um, the documentation within within hours will be updated with a Slack channel. You can send an email to get an invite to the Slack channel. We welcome um, discussion and questions on there, and we will do our best to uh, to answer them as quickly as possible. Chris. <coughs> Oh, I have to get off mute. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we're not the only ones that do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I cover up the thing because I got the full screen for the, the rest of it. Anyway, um, okay, so next up, where did my agenda go? Uh, next up is, oh, the uh, project life cycle, and then we'll follow that with, so that Arno, you want to present the project life cycle? Yes. Hi, everyone. This is Arno Ross from IBM. So um, we actually already looked at this uh, draft a few weeks ago. Uh, there were some people made some comments into the document. We edited the document as uh, you know in response to those comments. There were a couple of comments uh, that came out, uh, you know, concerns that came out in the uh, in the call last week, which I tried to address, and those. Uh, letters changes have been highlighted in the document. So if you scroll through it, you'll see a few on my train is yellow highlighted areas. And so, you know, briefly, what this is about is trying to clarify the fact that in, what incubation actually entails. The fact that incubation is meant to be fairly easy to get into because we want to you know, f make it easy for the community to bring new ideas and to explore. And um, and so it's kind of a free fall in some ways from that point of view, because we want to possibly allow competing efforts to be in incubation. Uh, we don't want to preclude anything at that level. So the text was edited to make that clearer. There's also, there was a question about the uh, the, the different stages that have been defined and how you progress to this, uh, whether this is a linear progression or whether we can actually have the civil iteration, the answer is the latter. So I made the clear text clear on that front as well. And there's this notion that, of course, you know, if we make it really easy for, the, for things to go into incubation, that means that there is no guarantee that because you get into incubation, your project will move any further than that. And so I added the sentence to that effect to say that, you know, there is no guarantee and um, some projects may never go beyond incubation. We may decide to abandon it. 
There is one question that was raised last week in the discussion that is still not being addressed by this document because I think uh, Chris Allen took the action item to, it, it's defining the criteria that would be used to move from, you know, incubation, maybe to get into incubation and then uh, from incubation to a uh, mature stage. So I left that out. But other than that, I think the document, you know, seems to make sense. And uh, I have tried to address all the questions and comments that have been raised. If there are any others, please let me know. Otherwise, I think it's a fairly decent document that we could try to, you know, that we could adopt as the basis for now. And as Chris was saying earlier, we can always iterate and make changes as we move forward. Any questions? What is the, yeah, yeah, just a quick question. Um, are there uh, particular specific reviews to go from state to state? Um, how will a project go from incubation to mature? So Are there the, gating reviews? Yeah, so the idea is that the, you know, within each project, there are some people who are, you know, labeled as leaders, and they would decide with the community that's around, involved in the project when they want to go to mature stage. And they have to have their own internal decision-making process to, to get to that point. And then they bring it up to the TSC. Ultimately, the TSC is the body that decides whether a project goes to maturation or not. And this is what I meant. There is no, I mean, the process is just, you bring it to the TSC, yeah, the TSC decides. decides. What is not what defined is, not is how, on what basis exactly the TSC decides. It is assumed that you know, the leader of the project would come to the TSC with a proposal uh, to move to a mature stage and, you know, with information they feel is relevant. But we could define possibly, you know, some criteria. And we have, um, I mean, Vipin will talk about the template for the proposal that is used at the first stage. We could possibly have either a revision of this template for moving to the next stage or something equivalent to that that's still open at this point. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions, concerns? If, if not, then I'd like to suggest that we sort of We take a, a, a quick vote and see if anybody is, um, if everybody is ready to sort of accept this as our, at least, you know, as, as, as Arm said. This is a starting point, you know, if we feel that we need to change it over time, um, that's our prerogative, obviously. Um, we'll go through a similar process of, you know, suggesting edits and, and so forth, but um, uh, I would, I'd like to suggest that we have a quick vote to see if everybody would agree to accepting this as our life cycle um, going forward. Todd, do you want to put that to a quick vote? Yep. Um, so we can just walk through that through everyone quickly. So Stan. Yes. All right, Tomas. Tomas, are you there? All right. Yes. Uh, Parda? Yes. Hart? Yep. Chris? Yep. Mick? Yes. Dave? Yes. Richard? Um, apologies, I'm delinquent. It's the first time I've seen it, so I can't comment. I'll just abstain for now. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. Uh, so that's seven in favor and one abstaining. So that passes. All right. Thank you. No. Um, so we'll uh, we'll move this in the wiki someplace and we'll, where it's not under proposals. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Uh, I'll put it on. I guess I'll put it under the TSC. So I'll move that a little bit later. So I'll take an action to move it, Todd. Um, and um, so next up is the windows. Too many windows. Uh, the project proposal template, and Vipin, you want to present 
uh, that, and let me just link it in the chat. There you go. And um, so, Vivian. Yes, uh, Chris, like I said before, um, I do not have access to the um, Google Docs, so it would be good if somebody else put, brings it up. But to present anyway, I don't have access. But I have access through other means, and I will do the talking. OK. Um, um, but uh, Todd, if you want to give me presenter, I'll, I can stick right there. So uh, to give the context, um, basically nothing much has come up uh, or nothing has come up except for Chris's uh, uh, comment that it should have uh, something saying sponsor instead of author, which I've changed. Uh, that's where it stands until I heard uh, Arno's comment just now talking about criteria for uh, transitioning in the life cycle, which I think is, you know, probably beyond the scope of a proposal template, uh, but um, you guys are free to comment on that. I will, I will rest at this point because everybody has uh, had a chance to comment. I've taken care of all the comments, and um, mm -hmm. I believe uh, if Chris, you want to take over at this point, or should I say anything else? Uh, no, I think I think that's fine unless anybody has uh, questions. Um, comments, concerns. Hopefully, everybody's been out there for a while. I think we've gone over this. I think a couple of times before. So, uh, and we've used it in in anger, so to speak, with the. Uh, with the previous proposal that we just uh, approved for incubation. So um, uh, with that said, unless anybody's got questions or concerns, I would propose that we thank Vipin for his efforts and uh, adopt this as the proposal template. Did someone Any just comment on this, or? See a highlight, but I don't see anything. Okay, I don't see anything either. Yeah. All right, so Todd, let's put this one to a vote too, then, please. All right, sounds good. We'll just walk through the list again. Uh, Stan? Aye. Tomash? Yes. Parda? Yes. Hart? Yes. Hart? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Chris? Chris? Yes. Mick? Yes. Yes, and nice work, Vipin. Dave? Dave? Yes. And Richard? Yes. yes. Great. Uh, that's all eight. That passes unanimously. Okay, then I'll uh, take an action. Uh, All right, thanks everyone. Uh, let's see, where did my agenda go? Uh, next up uh, are the updates from the various working groups. So first up is Patrick with requirements and use case. Okay. Um, I just posted the, the link uh, to the page. So uh, we held our first um, online meeting. Uh, there's a pointer to the agenda there. Um, in case you're interested and you missed it, uh, the meeting was announced on the Slack requirements channel and an email to all of the, uh, or most of the people who have, have told me they want to be members. It was not on a TSC mailing list. I'll make sure the next one is. Um, okay. We reviewed the, the, the goal of the group, which is to create system requirements and not use cases. Uh, but however, we, we do agree that we, the best way to do that is through use, use cases. But um, to, to kind of look ahead, we're starting a project to define how the requirements will be created, organized, and presented. So we're working at it from both, both directions. Um, 
We have an agreement in the next meeting to take at least one use case all the way through the process of completing the, the template because uh, many of them are not, uh, are not complete. And uh, Primrose from Accenture has volunteered to do that with the counterfeit drugs use case. So we'll start at the top and we will work through all the way through the use case um, template, um, explain any requirements, uh, any, I mean, any questions or requirements to people and add any that we may have missed. Um, there was some discussion in a previous meeting about whether we should be using uh, wikis or Google Docs. We're going to continue to use wiki. Uh, and the day and time for the next meetings are not set. Uh, the one that we had wasn't ideal, so we're going to pick a new one. And as I said, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll announce it. I'll announce it on the TSC. And then also, just a reminder, we have a semi-active Slack channel just for requirements. So uh, if you're interested in requirements, please join us. Awesome. Thank you. Any questions? For Patrick. No, oh, thank you very much, and uh, and thanks also for. Um, uh, I love the the way you've, you've written this up. This is this is great. Uh, thank next you. up is um, architecture. Rom, are you on? I've lost. I, I can't see the any. Um, I don't see Wong in the attendees, so I guess we can skip that one and go to Dave. Right I saw him leave. Uh, he knew he was next. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, hi, yeah, Dave Vol here. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, we too had our first uh, meeting post face to face. Um, yesterday uh, for the for the white paper working group um, you know we uh, unfortunately I haven't I've been in back-to-back -back meetings since that one so I haven't had a chance to update it but I will as I have done before follow Patrick's uh, good guidance on, on the proper way of, of posting the documentation and things so thank you Patrick for for doing that so I'll, yeah I'll follow the same same format um, okay so we had uh, yeah Thanks. Uh, yeah, so we had, you know, we, we started off kind of inviting our three new members. So, um, so Noam from Digital Asset, Morali, and uh, Mick um, are, uh, were added since the face-to-face. -face. And, uh, and so that makes the membership at nine. And so one of the, you know, other people have been kind of reaching out and saying, oh, we want to, want to be on there, want to be on there. You know, I think it's uh, nine is a pretty good size working group. Um, and, you know, we certainly want to incorporate other people's feedback, but I think, uh, we, you know, we agree that we want to kind of freeze the, the membership at, at this point. Now, um, uh, Stefan, I know you had, uh, you had asked about that. Um, Noam actually wasn't able to join us, and I know it's it's a tough time for him being in Israel. Also, be happy to swap you out for for Noam on, on as a digital asset representative. But um, as, as in terms of the size, we agreed that we're going to kind of keep it to nine members. Um, we we talked a bit about uh, you know just kind of reviewing you know why are, why were we starting off with the OBC white paper? You know, is everyone comfortable with that? Um, I I if we we kind of chuckled at the uh, the coin the CoinDesk article that, you know, said it was kind of raising eyebrows or was a little interesting. But, you know, we, we kind of, we reiterated, it wasn't just so much of the, you know, rubber stamping OBC as our platform, you know, it was just really taking it from the perspective of, perspective that, uh, you know, the, the white paper really was very well written and it kind of set a minimum bar for, for technical journalistic rigor uh, in describing the rationale and approach for the distributed uh, ledger platform. So, you know, they just did a, a Frank and company just did a, a, such a good job of putting together the argument and the professional writing. Um, and so everyone seemed to agree that, yeah, it makes sense. Um, we're going to modify it to, to reflect uh, what's different, but, um, but we're all, all comfortable with moving on that strategy. Uh, we we spent a little bit of time talking about the logistics of the white paper, what we wanted to do, what we agreed to do, and, and anyone you know jump in here if I get this wrong. But uh, uh, so every every two weeks we're gonna we plan on publishing a a n new version of the draft so people can review review it. Um, uh, 
you know, we, we definitely want broad community feedback. And, uh, you know, we'll define the process by updating our wiki page here on how people can submit their comments and, and, um, and suggestions and things like that. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll do our best to get those incorporated into, you know, we'll, we'll, we're going to have weekly meetings and then every two weeks we'll be pushing out a, a new updated version. Um, and uh, we'll be, uh, in addition to the wiki page, you know, we'll just make sure everyone knows how to comment um, and provide feedback through Slack and the tech mailing list. Mailing list. Uh, we also um, talked about uh, the Google Docs. So Google Docs is, is good for now, but once this thing starts to settle in, we'll probably um, migrate it over to LaTeX. Um, and, uh, and that has certain advantages. You know, it can be, you can start doing, uh, you can put it into to Git repo, you can, you know, start versioning and, and pull requests and things like that. But uh, we're going to keep it in, in Google Docs until we, until it starts to settle in. And, and, you know, like we've said before, this is not, this is, you know, it's, this is going to be a living document as, uh, as Hyperledger itself evolves, we'll be evolving the white paper. Uh, we did talk a little bit about, you know, should we have a white paper for each code stack? And uh, the answer is pretty much no. No, we, we think there should be one white paper and the white paper shouldn't have any, you know, implementation details, um, or things that are specific to any specific uh, uh, fabric, you know, uh, that is under the Hyperledger banner. But um, the way the uh, the paper now describes these high-level architectural components, we we feel that that is pretty broadly applicable to most any type of uh, distributed ledger. And so, you know, we're going to keep that level in there which is at a high enough level, again, that we, we feel that it should be able to um, align with multiple fabric uh, type of implementations um, that may come in the future even. So, so that was a, a bit about around the logistics. And then we finally got into the actual edits. Um, we didn't, you know, didn't have a whole lot of time to get through that. We, we did accept a bunch of the, um, of the earlier suggestions uh, that uh, the members were putting in there for edits, and um, you know, I, and and in fact, just getting to the background section of the paper, we talked a bit about the fact that you know OBC was originally designed to be permissioned only, and um, and you know we are going to modify that uh, to also uh, say that we also envision the scope for you know other use cases that are more appropriate for a public permissionless type of um, mechanism, but it will probably, you know, be a later focus. I don't know. We haven't exactly uh, phrased that, but it, in, in, a, in a, a paragraph that we're all comfortable with. So once we do that, though, we are intending to get, we think it would be valuable to get um, board review <laughs> and, uh, and agreement. Yeah. Um, so, so, so that will be our goal for next week is to finalize a the wording there, get something that we could actually get in front of the, the board to review and, and opine on just to make sure that we're in, in alignment with their thinking as well. Okay. And uh, yeah, and that was about it. So, so, um, we'll be, uh, I'll be updating the, the minutes, uh, uh, similar to how Patrick has done and we have another and we'll be meeting each week and, uh, and that's. That's what we have achieved. Awesome, thanks. And I think you know, uh, uh, I definitely would encourage you know putting up you know how people can even if they're not part of the working group how they can you know comment and and make suggestions and so forth. I think that'll be um, important to this going forward um, because I think it's it's probably the case. And I think everybody would agree that it's better to catch things early than you know if we have something in there and then all of a sudden we have a big fight over um, something that's already you know, pretty far down the road. So um, I would I would certainly encourage people to take a look, you know, maybe you won't, might you didn't think about, you know, when do you guys have a you know a reasonable draft that is worthy of review versus you know another some still in a, in a bit of a, um, a 
return. But um, you know, think, think about, and especially for for these, and maybe even for the require for other requirements and use cases, Patrick. Um, you know, when do you guys, you know, when you, when you guys think you have something that's almost soup, you know, that you might share it with others so that we can, um, you know, so so that people can can take time to review them and so forth. I don't know if you want to call it a, 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 okay. a fake draft or a candidate draft or whatever, but you know, something that would give people a sense of that is worthy of review. Yeah, so yeah, on the wiki, you know, we'll we'll be saying, you know, our our goal is to have draft 0 0.1, you know, of course everyone can can go in one one of the things we I didn't actually initially realize was that when we made the document public for read only, I thought everyone would be able to see how we were putting in our uh suggestions for edits, but apparently that isn't the case. It's only if you have uh edit Right? Can you actually see all the suggestions uh, for edits that that we were reviewing yesterday? Um, so, so the only so people can see you know the live accepted changes in kind of real time, if you will. Um, but we do want to uh, snapshot and say, okay, here's our you know 0 0.1 release, you know, and now we're going to have go to 0 0.2 on this date, or maybe we'll call it draft one, draft two, <laughs> whatever the, nor the numbering scheme will be but uh, but they'll be um, in the wiki page and so people can click on it and even see how it's evolving from draft to draft possibly okay all right thanks uh, next up is Chris and, and Chris I, I you know I, I realize you're just getting started but I thought I'd give you an opportunity to you know reiterate your call for, for participation Thank you. Um, yeah, so I uh, reached out on the mailing list and uh, we have a starting list of people that are, um, you know, interested in the, in the discussion. Uh, there's you know, a couple people have asked about, um, uh, um, you know, where can we, you know, you know is this a, a discussion list? And I think last week um, it was decided that by the by this group that we didn't want to have a poor proliferation of of uh, lists. Um, so I'm basically you know have to have, have to canvas everybody to talk about it further. Um, you know how do we want to meet and and how do we want to have our our discussions? But the basic idea is that you know when you're talking about a permission system. Um, identity is an important part of it and there are a lot of different models and and uh, uh, complications uh, on the identity side that we need to address um, for instance identity at the you know at the blockchain level is very very uh, different potentially than the identity from uh, the business logic level and how do we handle that so that's the goal of the of the discussion um, it may feed into the requirements uh, working group, but it may, you know, may uh, uh, be a separate uh, uh, discussion. That's it. All right. Thanks, Chris. Um, and so, yeah, uh, I think uh, in the, there may be some confusion, but I thought, you know, there was an action that was, we were going to create a a list so maybe the, the back and forth just didn't seem to have a clear resolution of it. Um, you know, Philip, if, if, if you and Tal are, you know, could could uh, work on, on getting that. I, I think it's fine having a, a list. You know, some people prefer Slack, some people prefer lists. Um, I think uh, if I understood correctly that there is going to be some sort of a Slack and uh, email and integration and, uh, you know, we'll have to work with Steve and, uh, and his team to to see where that stands, but um, I'm fine with, with creating a list. Um, if, if well, 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 what I'm, I, I need to canvas everybody. It's been a, a pretty crazy week. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, I'll canvas everybody who replied. There were about nine uh, people that were interested in participating. And uh, uh, let me find out exactly what they would prefer. Okay, fair enough. I guess we can hold on. Chris, could, uh, Chris could, could you make sure I'm on the list? Uh, I, I, I believe I have replied to your email. Um, it's uh, been from IBM. 
Uh, yes, uh, you have. I, I'm fair. Yes, I have your information. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. Where's my go? So next up, thanks, Chris. Uh, next up is uh, the two face to faces. Um, so, um, so, so we 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 chatted with Steve with more last week uh, on a TSP. And his suggestion was we get together. His for, suggestion was we get together for. There's an echo. Um, um, his suggestion was we get together for a half day or so, um, uh, somewhere convenient uh, to to go through, you know, what tooling needs we would have, and actually start the work of you know driving that integration, you know, with putting Garrett. You know, to lock down the, the Git repos, and um, you know, integrating that with Slack and with uh, Travis, or um, you know, whatever we're using for the the, the build orchestration. Um, and so, uh, I think the best way to deal with that is to put together a Doodle poll um, and throw up some dates. Uh, and again, I think this is, from my understanding, was a half day, maybe a full day, uh, face to face. Um, and you know, probably in New York, I think uh, we were waiting to see where the individual was going to be sourced from that uh, would be primarily responsible. Although uh, Steve did tell me that uh, uh, they're pretty much a global team. They're you know they're on 24/7, and they have you know full coverage around the globe. Um, but he's got folk in uh, in Toronto, and I think also in um, Portland that he was considering. So. Um, so we, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can get a, a name identified for who who be our primary contact, and then um, we should, uh, uh, and then I think we should get a poll out there, probably within the next couple of weeks, because if things are starting to come together. There's a code repository we need to get get Garrett in, installed, and we need to get a, a build, you know, LinkedIn that you know when people are checking in requests. Um, that we can actually drive a build, drive some of the unit and integration tests, and come back with um, you know, whether or not Travis or Jenkins or whichever we use uh, is, is giving us the green light and so forth. So um, anything we can do there, I think, will facilitate getting this pull request merged more quickly. Um, so that's the tooling face-to-face -face or the continuous integration face-to-face, -face, if you will. Um, and then um, the, the next uh, hackathon, the next technical face-to-face, -face, uh, we talked about doing around the first week of May. That also happens to coincide with the consensus um, event. Uh, and there's also, I think, a hackathon of the weekend uh, before consensus um, in, in New York. Uh, we did uh, talk previously about you know, where people would prefer to have the next hackathon while we were at the, the hackathon that was hosted by JP Morgan Chase. And it seemed like there was a, uh, a heavier uh, uh, lean towards uh, New York or, or East Coast. Um, there was a few people that would prefer uh, San Francisco and the West Coast where I am now. Um, but uh, I, think, I think New York seems to win out. And again, if we want to do it in the beginning of May, uh, you know, maybe if you can organize it around an event where people are possibly already going to be attending, that that might be the right thing. So, um, uh, any any thoughts on having another hackathon in New York? And I'll ask Philip and Todd whether or not they were able to solicit any offers. And if not, we can ask on the phone. Um, uh, a quick note, I believe that a number of companies are scheduling um, workshops and other things the day after the official um, uh, consensus uh, conference. So I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of confused, is this a, a uh, simultaneously with or the week before or the week after or oh, one day and on Friday or what? Right, and so we'll just as we just suggested with the tooling face to face and uh, uh, and with the you know the requirements group, um, I think we'll put out a doodle poll to figure out what day 
or days, I, I'm thinking maybe two days would be good, um, would be um, uh, the best where we could get the most uh, attendance. So, but I'm just trying to sort of get a sense for, is, is this in line with what others are thinking? Um, or is it people thinking that that week might just be too crowded and they have to find the you know, following week or something? Hey, Chris, uh, this is Hart here. Um, I just wanted to comment that uh, I think uh, New York is probably great if there's already something out there that people are going to be traveling for. Uh, but it might be wise to consider the West Coast for one of these at some point so we can kind of engage the community and get more people interested uh, on the West Coast. I think a lot of people preferred the East Coast at the previous face-to-face -face because, well, most people were from the East Coast. And I think if you took a similar poll at a West Coast meeting, you'd get a strong West Coast preference. <laughs> That's possibly true, Art. Uh, thanks. Uh, I, and I tend to agree. I, and I think we should move it around. I don't think we should have it always in the same place, certainly, um, or in the same, even. But there are some people coming from Europe. Um, and so also the East Coast is a little bit more convenient for the, uh, so, um, any any other thoughts on this? this I mean, who who was? That's, that's going to be awkward. I think yeah. Let's just do a doodle poll and just you know quickly get a sense for um, what dates might work for people, and then um, Philip and and um, and Todd. You know, I'd, I'd like to you know start soliciting offers to uh, to host it. I don't know, I mean, I don't, David, I don't want to put you on the spot, but that was a really awesome uh, facility you had there. I don't know if that's available. Oh, Hi, off. sorry, I was uh, on, on mute there. Um, <laughs> you know, possibly. Um, there was a little bit of sticker shock from our management on the cost <laughs> with the uh, our internal stuff. You know, I we're big supporters of this, so I can I can ask again. Um, okay. But, uh, yeah, but uh, uh, I, I can I can investigate that. Okay, fair enough. And and uh, and you know, we should also explore whether or not the um, the project can 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 offset some of that. Um, well, that's that's true. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean uh, that would certainly lower the barrier for a follow-up. <laughs> so yeah, that, that could very well be uh, the the solution then. Okay, great. All right, so I guess we need another action then for a do the poll around the face-to-face -face week of. Um, I, I don't know what the actual date is there, but it's the first week of May. And um, and then that's I guess we're sort of at end of job unless anybody else had agenda items they think um, we should bring up. Hi, uh, this is Vani Kamara from DTCC again. Uh, something slightly off topic. Uh, I see that these uh, sessions are being recorded. So is there any way for us to get access to the recordings? Because uh, if you miss a meeting or you know, a portion of a meeting. They're they're all posted in the in the wiki. So if you look on the wiki under the technical steering committee, the minutes and the recordings are all posted. Shortly oh, under that. Okay. Yeah. I have a question for 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 thought on chat, but I'm going to repeat it here. Um, we want to uh, publish our images, our Docker images, out to Docker, and we've been using the location. Uh, open blockchain. I like to change that to hyperledger location, but someone already has that location. Um, do we know whether that someone belongs to the hyperledger community? Uh, I'm not certain. Uh, I can connect with you uh, offline after this call. Okay, I appreciate that. Okay, I think then that we're, we're good. So thanks everyone, and we'll talk to you all next week.
Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Thanks, everybody.